They aren't brave, they are wicked. Uh, there's this movement that's been happening now for probably over 100 years, and um, here's how it works. You get some warped person that's mentally ill, and they come out and they say, I know what the Bible says, and I know that culture rejects what I want to do or what I want to be, um, because culture is still somewhat Bible-based, Judeo-Christian values, as they would say. Um, so I'm going to go against that. And I'm going to basically step out into the field and say, if I don't get hit by lightning while I'm doing this sin, then I must have just pioneered a new movement or something like this. And they come out and they say, look at me. And then all of a sudden people say, hey, they didn't get hit by lightning. They didn't get knocked down dead. So I guess we'll step out too, you know, and all these different movements out there. And this one comes out and that one comes out and whatever else. And uh, it's all part of atheism people that don't believe that there's a God. Make no mistake about it, the number one system of religion in the whole world is atheism. Atheism. Number one. You say, well, actually, statistically, they're, you know, atheists are actually a smaller group of people. No, they're not. No, they're not. You have people all through these church buildings, they're atheists. They might not be professing atheists, but they are practicing atheists. Every child molesting priest in the Catholic Church is an atheist. Not one man would ever molest somebody's child if they believed, truly believed in God and that they would be standing before him someday. They're all atheists. You know, the, as I said in another video, my son right now, we're learning about World War II and that time period and, and about some of the early aviation and things like that. He really loves airplanes and, and uh, got a book from the library. And uh, there's a whole thing about Amelia Earhart you know, the first lady of the air and all this other stuff. And so we, you know, started studying this witch, feministic witch. And, uh, and she came out and she, I guess there was a situation where um, she was originally trying to look like a woman, you know, back then, wearing dresses and things and had her hair long. And then when she decided she wanted to be a pilot, she started wearing men's pants um, and cut her hair short. And then it was just rebellion. I'm going to see if I can do this. You know, and, and now all the people today, oh, she was so brave. Oh, she was so brave. She pioneered the way for future women. You know, yeah, it's called she was mentally ill. She was one of the early feminists, and she destroyed women out into the future with her wickedness. But uh, one of the things that she did, um, she had a guy that wanted to marry her, and he had to propose something like eight times, I think they said, to, to what she finally said, okay. And then she said, some, I'm not going to quote it exactly because I don't care to, but she said something to the effect, I'm not going to hold you to any medieval standards of marriage and you can basically cheat on me and I'm going to cheat on you. Sure. Oh, how progressive, how brave. No, she was wicked and she hated this book and she hated what this Bible says, how women should live. And so she comes out with other women and they start to wear pants. Look it up. I'm not, I'm not joking. I mean, it's not some kind of a thing. Of, well, that's your narrow-minded opinion. It's just you were raised this way or something. No, I was raised with women that wore pants. Okay. My family was not some kind of all the girls and everything. They all wore dresses. No, they didn't. My grandmother did. I never saw her in pants because she was, you know, Mennonite. But the whole point is uh, everybody else in my life, they all wore pants. Where did this, the, the movement come from? Go back to the early 1920s and, uh, that's where it came from. Women's suffrage, the women's right movement. That's where it came from. There were no women wearing pants before then, as far as there might have been some wing nut or something out there that was crazy in the head or something. But the vast majority of women, they wore dresses and skirts for thousands of years. And if you want to know another interesting thing, uh, look up the word transvestite. See when it was created early 1920s? Hmm. What was happening then? Oh yeah, that's right. Women's suffrage. Transvestites. You're taking the vesture and you're wearing the vesture of the other sex on yourself. Transvestite. That's what it means. Look it up. Not my opinion. <laughs> but oh, oh, she was so brave. Oh, she, she crashed her airplane. She was a lousy pilot. Oh, so it was bad circumstances. Yeah, there were a lot of men that flew in bad circumstances. Lindberger and some of these other guys. 
you know, uh, Baron von Richthofen, the Red Baron, you know, World War I fighter pilot. Yeah, he was in some bad circumstances. He didn't crash, got shot down eventually. But, you know, okay, that's understandable why he came down. He got shot. But, you know, Charles Lindberger, or, or, I think that's what it was, you know, what about him? He didn't crash. Amelia, Amelia Earhart up there is a woman. I, I'm just as good as a man. I'm just as good as a man. <laughs> Oh, where, what happened to Amelia Earhart? I know what happened to her. She went to hell. <laughs> That's where she went. We tried to find the body of Amelia Earhart. Don't worry about her body. Worry about her soul. Her soul's in hell. There's no way that that woman was saved. Good riddance to her. <laughs> well, I want to teach my daughter about a, a, a hero in the faith. Okay, Esther, Ruth. Phoebe in the New Testament, Mary, the Bible Mary, not the Catholic Queen of Heaven Mary. This would be some good Marys or some good women to uh, teach your daughter about. Proverbs 31 woman. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8. I'm going to show you this whole movement. You know, people come out. It's, it just cracks me up. Oh, we're so brave. Oh, you're so brave. You're coming out of the closet. Oh, you're so brave. <laughs> uh, no, uh, all of this stuff has been done before. And it's so funny because you, you read the Bible and you realize, hey, you know what? Uh, all this modern movement and everything else, it's all happened in other times. Oh, we have this, all these people want to be sodomites now and we have our rights and I identify as this and that. And my pronouns are they and them. You know, and I know one of you brought up a really good point in the comments and you said, yeah, their, their pronoun is they and them because they have legion in them, legions of devils in them. You know, we are legion. We are many. <laughs> yeah, that's why they want to be called they, a plural name. Very good point. I love the comments I get in some of the videos and things. Uh, some of them are rather kooky, but, you know, I like those too. But, uh, <laughs> you know, some of the people attack me and things. Great, fine. Um, but let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 12 through 18. We'll see this thing of this, well, we're progressive, or we're going to... Uh, come out and, and do all this stuff and, and we'll do it and then see if God strikes us down. And if we don't, hey, everybody, come on out here. Everybody else follow me. I'm, I'm the brave pioneer. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 12. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Oh, Denley, you're such a crazy nut. You're, you and your sky wizard, I've heard the Lord call it. And, and this fairy tale, you know, God and whatever else. You don't believe God exists. They're atheists. You see what I'm saying? Oh, no, atheism, atheism is the result of modern scientific inquiry. We're so much more intelligent now. Uh, no, they were saying it back there. The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. They're saying the Lord, they're just, but they're saying there's no God. He's forsaken the earth. I mean, if God exists, you wouldn't say he seeth us not. So they're just saying, there is no God. Let's just do whatever we want. Hey, we're in the dark right now. But let's step out of the dark and come into the light. Let's come out of the closet and out publicly. What once would have been frowned upon? What once people, when people had common sense? Hey, you know what? I wonder what happens if you get a whole nation where men are with men and women are with women and none of them ever come together and make children. I wonder what happens to that nation. Oh, that's right. They all die. Well, that, it's not my opinion. We're talking about science here. Sterilizing your population means the end of your population. Maybe I should go to seminary and get a degree in theology so I can understand that. <laughs> That's not going to help you. Verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Once they say, There is no God, then they start to do greater abominations. There's no new thing under the sun. It's all been done before. You're not brave. All you sodomites out there and all the other perverts and everything else, you're not brave. If you're a feminist, you're not brave. You're a fool. You're going against the instruction manual that God wrote for man. 
Yes, and I said man, not human. Verse 14, whatever that is. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. You say, what's, what's the Tammuz thing all about? Very simple. They're bringing false idols into what would be the temple of the Lord back then and saying, oh, we're worshiping God with these false idols. Exactly what they do with the church buildings today. It's exactly what they do. Verse 16, And he brought me in the, into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. You know, the Islamic junk, you know, down and oh, go fall down to the east. No, 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 no. The prophet Muhammad, he, he, it was revealed by Allah. Allah gave it to him in the, you know, whatever century after the New Testament was written. No, this, this was never done before. It's, it's brand new. It was just revealed to, uh, to uh, Muhammad. Yeah, that's the guy. No, it was being done in the Old Testament. Turning against the Lord and worshiping the sun towards the east. Baal worship. Huh. Did you know that uh, Catholic altars, many times, I think maybe even all the time, they face the east? And the priest takes that round wafer. I don't have any round wafer. I'll just take round duct tape. And he takes the round wafer and he goes like this. What's he doing? Uh, what? No, 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 brother. That's Brian, you heretic, you, you dumb Protestant or whatever heretic. Uh, no, it's the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist. What Jesus, Jesus did it. He started the Holy Eucharist at the Last Supper. Really? I didn't read anywhere in the New Testament where Jesus said, okay, take the bread. Let me just slowly bring it up here. <laughs> he didn't do that. Where'd they get it from? They're Baal worshippers. Priests of Baal. Oh, the Bible is such an outdated book. Only if you're completely ignorant and just blinding your eyes and saying, I don't see it. Like the little monkey thing, you know, you got the monkey going like this, and the monkey going like this, and the monkey going like that. Mm -hmm. That's modern atheism. Um, it's right there. The same idol worship that was going on in the Old Testament right here goes on to this very day. Same thing. You know, I remember the Teenager, as a teenager, there was a Bon Jovi song. You know, it's all the same, only the names have changed. Yeah, well, you know, lost man going to hell, but he said that right. <laughs> of course, he gets it from the Bible. You know, there's no new thing under the sun. It's all been done before. So, well, it wasn't his own invention. He just stole from the Bible. Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Every nation gets to a point where they are so wicked that the Lord just simply says, okay, I don't care anymore. I'm not going to listen to you. You know, they have these national prayer breakfasts and whatever else. I don't even know if they have them under Biden, you know, Sleepy Joe. I have no idea, you know, but they used to, you know, under the Republicrats, you know, the democ Democans or whatever. Uh, they don't do it. You know, there's not really any difference between Democrats and Republicans. That's what I'm saying at the top. It's all just, you know, they're uh, corporate speech readers. Or, you know, readers for Big Pharma or something like that. You know, just put the little teleprompters there and we'll just read a speech. That's all that they are. They're actors. But uh, they used to have these prayer things. You know, National Day of Prayer and all this. God's not even listening. And when the violence gets started in this nation, here in America, and in a lot of the other countries out there, um, it's going to be like a, a wave like the back there when that tsunami hit Japan. I remember watching the footage of that back in 2011, I think it was. And the wave just comes through. 
and just goes over the levee and just goes out into the city and there's vehicles and they're being they're picking up the vehicles and they're moving and there's just takes down a light pole and you see the wires in it and then it goes over and, it, and here's a house and the roof and the roof caves in and there's no one to stop the wave come out and say whoa hold on stop lord please help us to stop goes in and just destroys everything that's what the anger of the Lord is going to be like. Go to Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 5. And it says here, And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. If judgment begin, it must first begin at the house of God. The Bible talks about in the New Testament. Then they began at this ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. That's what's going to happen in the future. If, you know, men actually start to make decisions. As I said in my other video, you know, uh, they got all these female officers and everything else right now in the military. Can't get anything done with them. Um, you know, they, they might try to go in and slay in the city and try to make the orders, but, you know, as long as their fingernails are manicured correctly and they have the right type of polish on it or something, uh, men need to take, take charge and get some things done. And it will come. It will get to the point where the devil's just simply going to say, okay, enough, get rid of these people, wipe them out, and I'm going to raise up some real men to get some work done here for me. And when it comes, and the Lord says, okay, the devil comes to the Lord and he says, can I get this done now? Can I finally have permission to go in and wipe out, wipe out this nation? The Lord looks down and he says, yes, go ahead. I have my children safely off here and safely off there. Take that city out. Go ahead. Good. And they go in and they slay in the city. See the old film reels of the bodies, you know, there and, you know, on the, carts and they're taking them to mass burials and things and bulldozers pushing and you know all the bodies are all flopping and whatever else pushing them into the big holes and okay put the dirt on top of it you know you see the people going around there like this and they have the you know cloth uh over their mouth and you know it stinks so bad and they went and cleaned out those nazi death camps that was all fake you know of course because yeah trad cats that cracked me up you know the new ifb they, they came out with a lot of that stuff anderson got into the holocaust denial thing i originally had asked him i knew what he was i knew he was going into the whole um replacement theology and there was no holocaust the whole thing so many years ago i asked steven anderson point blank in a video do you believe that the holocaust was real or fake and he said real and then years later oh it was fake <laughs> and, you know then it was uh, somebody brought it up, you know, hey, you said to Brian Denlinger, you know, to his qu question that you believed it was real. He said, yeah, well, he said, I didn't know all the details back then. I didn't know all the details. <laughs> yeah, but I knew all the details about you, Stephen Anderson, um, which is, you know, he's just pretty much gone and done now. The new IFB fell apart, if you don't know about that. A lot of the newer viewers might not even know what the new IFB was. Um, basically, radical... Uh, Catholics coming along posing like Baptists. So, which isn't very hard because most Baptists are very similar to trad cats. That's another so story entirely. But uh, <clears throat> verse 8, And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, the, iniqui the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. Yeah, here in America we have perverseness that leads to the land being full of blood. You say, how so? Fornication leading to abortion. Man, what a bunch of sick monsters. You can actually murder the baby that's being formed in your womb as a woman? Oh, I just can't wait to get... Oh, I can feel the baby moving. Ew. Let's get this to done, okay? Let me go in here and, and just, you know, lay on my back and s spread them and whatever else and just, just put it, something up in there. Just rip the pieces out already. I mean, oh, good. There's an arm. There's a, there's a little bit of a leg. Good. Kill that baby. Deserving of hell much there? Wicked witch? 
For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord saith not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Wouldn't it be something if all the women that got abortions, if God had them get killed the same way? Wouldn't that be something? Here comes some kind of a thing or, you know, whatever it would be, I don't even know, and it's just ripping their arms off and just <clears throat> ripping their heads off or some bomb goes off and just <clears throat> the body parts everywhere. There's her little baby, little hands and little arms and things. I'll throw those in the medical waste trash. Yeah, there's a, there's a one over there. Get that. Uh, just take that. Uh, put it in there. Ooh, it stinks. Lift the lid up quickly. Call the truck and get this thing hauled off. All these dead baby parts. You know, does does pharmaceutical, the you know Pfizer or whatever, can they use this stuff? They can't. You know, they pay for us. Uh, okay. Well, you know, maybe we'll send it to dog food factory or something like this. Uh, let's just get rid of these babies. And the time will come. Hey, look at all these bodies. Of all these people that were slain in the city. All these wicked, evil people. What do we do with them? Take them and just put them in the landfill. Ugh, it stinks. Get them out of here. Arms and legs and heads and guts hanging out and whatever else. Just go. Say, so what a terrible thing. I just don't believe my God of love would do that. Well, I don't know who your God of love is, but he's not the God of the Bible. See, right now, oh, the Lord's forsaken the earth. The Lord seeth us not. I don't even know if there is a God. I mean, I've watched all this stuff on Hollywood, and they, they put all these doubts into my mind, and evolution theory. I was raised with that, and we came from monkeys, uh, uh, and at some you know unknown time in the past, uh, nothing exploded and created everything. And so there is no God. It's been proven. The Lord seeth us not. Let's go out and do all these wicked abominations. Let's see who can go out and do the most wicked things. Hey, at one point in time, it was wrong to, to you know, have a bestiality. You know, hey, why don't, why don't we get that and make it public? I mean, why bother, you know, let's just have people fornicating out on the streets and sodomy out on the streets and whatever else. Why not? Let's try it. Oh, so-and-so did it. Kinsey, you know, this guy that Kinsey or whatever he went out and he was doing all this sexual perversion stuff and you know he lived a pretty good life and he died and things and and he was brave he was brave no he was wicked oh here's somebody and there's some guy and he wants to put on a skirt and walk around hey I'm a woman now oh he's so brave no he's wicked he's wicked and something has to be done about this well, I think we should just focus on the gospel. I don't think we should judge people. We shouldn't judge. <laughs> you see where that's gotten us? Let's go to the New Testament now, Romans chapter 1. Let's just not judge. Let's be accepting of other people. No. And hey, you know, if you're a pervert out there or some feminist or whatever else, you know, the, you know what you need to do? Try to pass laws to come after men like me because you can't handle what I'm saying. I'm going to have his channel shut down because I can't ha handle what he has to say. Yeah, because you know I'm right. That's your problem. Oh, we have to have hate crime laws and whatever else. Why? Why? <laughs> pass your little laws and whatever else. Yeah, what the problem is I have a law book. And a lawgiver right here. And you aren't touching me unless my God gives me permission. Or gives you permission, excuse me. If my God gives you permission to kill me, then you can kill me. If not, then you can't touch me. I'm invincible. Pass all the laws you want. Go ahead. If you're such a narrow-minded bigot that you can't handle free speech, your time's coming. All right? All these wicked perverts, I want you to understand something. Your day will come. Your day of judgment will come. When your own way is recompensed upon your head. There will be an alt-right system. There will be a new Nazi movement, especially in America. There are too many Jews in this nation. And they're here. At one point in time, Protestants were able to protect them and say, 
Okay, you know, you can be safe here. We won't persecute you. But there's too many Catholics now. And I will tell you this right now. I promise you, 100% sure word of prophecy, God is going to allow horrible things to happen to the Jews in America to drive them back to their land where they're supposed to be. The nation of Israel. You better go back. Go back now while it's easy. You have a chance of God protecting you over there in your land. But not here in America. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. We're so powerful here. We have wealth. We have connections and everything else. And it's all going to be taken from you like that. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Says the Apostle Paul. And says Brian Denlinger today. Romans chapter 1 verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Why would you hold truth in unrighteousness? Because you love your sin and you don't want to give it up. That's the reason most people don't get saved, by the way. Don't give me this thing. It's just because they're in unbelief or whatever else. No, they love their sin and they don't want to give it up. And they know that salvation means a changed life. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. There is no excuse. Not one person is ever going to stand before God on the day of judgment and say, I didn't know about you. I had no idea that you existed. Not going to happen. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Remember what the Bible said back there in Ezekiel? About they do these things in the dark? Your foolish heart can be darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Modern man perfect example and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves you know what you're doing when you're out there and you're a pervert when you go out there and you get drunk really badly drunk when you're out there and you're doing drugs when you go out there and you get tattoos and you say I'm just going to put them all over my body as many places I can and piercings and things in my tongue and things in my nose and other places you know what you're doing? you're dishonoring your own body it's terrible it's not good for you I'm going to put ink in my body and have it etched into my skin that it will never wash off what kind of toxic substances would be an in ink to keep it on your skin forever that it doesn't wash off. And you don't think it's going to lead to cancer or something else like that? And you know, I get it. There are Christians that get saved after they've gotten tattoos. Fine. I understand that. I've got plenty of scars on my body. No tattoos, praise the Lord. But I've got plenty of scars on my body from sin in my past. Absolutely. But you see, I stopped doing that stuff when I got saved. You're dishonoring your own body. And notice it's uh, this, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Oh, I remember back in the past it was uh, unfashionable, it was, it was wrong and wicked for women to smoke in public. Women just didn't do that. And then the flapper era, they started to get a cigarette and, the, you know, then the Virginia Slim cigarettes and whatever else, the ads in the 1950s and 60s and you've come a long way, baby, and all this stuff. Yeah. They step out and they say, God's forsaken the earth. There is no God. Come on, everybody, come on, it's fun, let's do it. And they're walking into a trap. They're walking right into a trap. The wrath of God is going to come upon them. Verse 25. Well, you know, all this stuff is your interpretation. My preacher says it differently. Uh, okay, here's his verse, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie 
and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You know, that's one of the big reasons, another re big reason I stay away from church buildings because all of them change the truth of God into a lie. Not one church building out there, organized religion, not one of them can claim to truly follow this book. We are Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. No, you're not. No, you're not. The faith which was once delivered to the saints, the New Testament, not one of them went to church. Not one of them gave 10% of their tithe. Not one of them dressed in Sunday best. Not one of them stood in a pulpit and preached a sermon on every Sunday morning from 9 to 12 or, or 10 to 12 or whatever. Not one of them. They're doing something that is completely foreign to the pages of the Bible and then pretending that you're a Bible, believers, Bible believer in all matters of faith and practice. Adding to the scriptures. Yeah. And what do they do? They worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. They worship the creature. And you can see that. I mean, the Baptists are experts at that. Oh, brother, so-and-so, doctor, so-and-so. You know, Jack Hiles, and he comes out, and it's they're playing the music, and, and he comes out, you know, and, and all the student body stands up, ah, you know, back when he was alive, you know. Oh, he's the man of God, you know. Oh, I remember in my study, you know, exposing Jack Hiles, the one student, he stands up, and he says, if Brother Hiles told us that 2 plus 2 equals 5, we'd believe it, amen. And they're serious. You know, at his funeral... Uh, you know, I think if we can approach the Lord in, in heaven and just say, Lord, I know you're with Brother Jack Hiles there, but if we could just have a moment of his time just to tell him a thank you, you know, like the fourth member of the Godhead or something like this, or, well, Trinity, you know, so, because they're Trinitarians. They believe in the satanic pagan Trinity concept, but uh, that's a whole other issue. But yeah, these people, they worship the creature, rather than the creator. And what does it lead to? Verse 26, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. <laughs> Again, the Bible is such an amazing book. You just love this book right here. It's against nature. You know, I'm a proud lesbian. Okay, that's against nature. Well, then what you have to do is you have to go find a plant that's asexual or something like this. And you say, well, see, the plants, <laughs> please. Okay, you're supposed to be a mammal according to your evolutionary beliefs. Could you please show me one mammal where the two women can produce children? You know what happens? You say, well, there, there's, there's a sodomite gene out there that, you know, uh, this genetic trait, it goes and then you become a, a you know, a, Sodomite. I don't use the term gay because gay means happy in the Bible. So I'm, they're not going to steal that term from the Bible. King James Bible. But, you know, two women together. Oh, it's, it's a natural genetic thing. Okay, then it would be eliminated in one generation. Just that simple. It's that simple. It's against nature when women use the lose the or go against the natural use of the woman. Amelia Earhart that I talked about earlier. Um... I'm going to be a pilot. I'm going to be just as good as a man, man and whatever else. Um, I wonder what her children thought. Oh, that's right. I don't think she had any. <laughs> Against nature. Verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. All the diseases and everything else that go along with sodomy. All the problems, all the hardships. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God's forsaken the earth. There is no God. We can do whatever we want. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God will give you what you want. If you want to be that ridiculous and wicked, go right ahead. God will let you do it. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, 
There you go. That's your modern day atheists. Despiteful. It's so funny. Oh, I'm not. A, I'm not a hater of God. How could I hate somebody that doesn't exist? Then why do you stalk videos like this one or channels like this one? Why do atheists just become obsessed with religion and they have to, you know, the rational icky? Oh, we're going to make a whole article attacking Brian Denlinger and lying about him and libel and slander against Denlinger to try to tear down his ministry. Why? I'm a cuckoo bird, according to you people. Just go back and smoke your pot and fornicate with whoever you want to. You bunch of fools. What's your problem? <laughs> You're a hater of God. You see, I preach word, the word of God without compromise. I call devils like you by your name. Fools, according to scripture. I don't back down. That's why they have to write their little articles about me and, oh, let's go and attack him and let's, you know, whatever. Yeah, you're a hater of God. You know God exists. Every atheist out there, you know. You, you know, you're not that stupid. You can go out there and you can look at nature and say, yeah, this didn't happen by random chance. No way. But I hate the thought of God. Mm -hmm. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. It's interesting there. Inventors of evil things. Hmm, let's see. What? What level of perverseness hasn't been done yet? Uh, well, you know, sodomy's kind of getting old now. That you know, I need to be some kind of a non-binary alien shark, uh, fur tree, uh, weasel or something. They all identify as that, or you know, and they just come out with these new things all the time. You know, I just saw a report uh, article that down in New Hampshire, down south of us here in Maine. Uh, that there was a school and they were saying, you know, the students walked out because, you know, the school had rules there that boys and girls are supposed to use bathrooms assigned to their particular gender. You know, and that's just not fair to the trans students. You know, if you get a guy that wants to go into a girl's bathroom and, you know, use the lavatory like a, a girl would, well, he should have the right or, or no, she should have the right. No, no, they should have the right to do it <laughs> or it or, you know. Whatever other pronouns are there. It's insanity. Inventors of evil things. Hey, you know what? What could we make that's, you know, maybe we should say that snow is racist because it's only white. I'm getting a little bit of white supremacy from snow. I think that's why there's so many white people that live up north. Oh, it makes sense. Inventors of evil things. People are coming out with the most stupid bunch of nonsense. Then I'm going to rant, and I'm going to rave, and I'm going to yell about it and whatever else because it's my job. I'm a preacher. I'm a Bible believer. And you see, by me doing this, I'm hoping maybe I can rattle some of you enough to make you think. Put some thoughts into the old noggin there and start to realize, hey, you know what? If this nut is correct... Maybe there will be a judgment coming. Maybe there's bad things that are coming. Maybe there is a God. Maybe the fact that he's written about this thing thousands of years ago and we're seeing it happen exactly as the Bible says, maybe there are some bad things coming. And maybe, just maybe, this radical preacher actually loves me enough to warn me about it. Maybe, yeah. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. You're worthy of death if you do these things. You earn it. The wages of sin is death. Your wicked ways are going to be recompensed upon your own head. God's going to get rid of you eventually. God in his mercy, he's long-suffering, he's patient, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Dies on the cross to pay for your wicked sins all the evil, wicked things that you've done. And God says, I'll just take them all and I'll just forget them completely. And I'll take my perfect righteous standards, my perfect righteous life, and I'll just go like this and give it to you. And I'll take all the sins that you've ever committed, all the evil thoughts that you've ever thought, every secret, wicked thing that nobody else knows about, I'll take it all and I'll put it on myself. He became sin who knew no sin, that we might be the, made the righteousness of God in him. 
He's going to die on the cross and He pays for your sins and He says, Whosoever will, you want to come? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you want to be saved? You can be saved today. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Take it. Come on. Get saved. Ask the Lord to save you. Come to Him as a broken sinner. Take the time to research. Look at some of the salvation messages on this channel. Do something before it's too late. Before you're one of the bodies that's put into the big hole in the ground. What was their name? What were they interested in? Who are their relatives? What things did they like? Who cares? The body's rotting. It's disgusting. It stinks. Pile it in with the other ones. Hey, you, grab the wrists. I'll grab the ankles. Take the body and throw it into the back of the truck. We have to get these out of here. Disease is going to start to spread. What's that guy's name? What's this girl's name? Doesn't matter. That's your future if you're wicked. And then to top it off, your body is dead. Your soul goes before God. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's your future. Unless you want to listen to me as a preacher. But the Bible says there, verse 32, Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such, such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. The Bible says to abstain from all appearance of evil. Get away from television. Get away from movies. Get away from wicked videos on YouTube. Get away from wicked websites. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Not some. Well, it's important for me to understand the globalist plans. That's why I need to watch movies such and such. Wicked. Completely wicked. I mean, you're worthy of death. You understand what the Bible said there in Romans chapter 1? If you do those things, you're worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, I really like that one movie. I really was my favorite, one of my favorite series on TV and whatever else. And God says, you're worthy of death. Well, I'm a saved Christian, but, you know, I like to just flirt with, you know, what the devil does and whatever else and just kind of be entertained by that. You're worthy of death. The axe is going to fall. It's going to come. The judgment of God, um, he's tearing. He's waiting. You know why? Read the book of Revelation, that's why. A third of all the people die. Just one judgment. War. Peace is taken from the earth. Famine. Pestilence. All kinds of horrible things happening. Except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. God is actually going to have to shorten the time of Jacob's trouble. He has to shorten it so some people can survive. You see, once this ball gets rolling, this death ball, if you will, it's teetering right now on the brink. It's about to tip over, and once that thing goes down the hill, there will be no stopping it. Right now, the, the levee is keeping the wave, and the wave is getting higher and higher and higher. It's about like this. It's getting higher and higher, and when that wave tips over the top of that levee, there will be no stopping it. The wrath of God is coming. It's coming soon. There are so many things right now, just, you know, world ending, stuff hitting the fan, you know, whatever you want to say out there. Uh, when it hits, it's going to be biblical in its scope. It's going to be bad. I thank the Lord for the people that have listened to me over the years. Um, you, you know, you'll get to a, a point, brethren, and I've said this thing, and I need to say it fairly frequently just to keep it in people's minds. Um, don't ever forget, this is your standard. King James Bible, not me. I'm going to say something wrong and tick you off and offend you, and I mean, probably rightfully so, and you're going to look and say, Denninger's an idiot. He, I can't believe I ever watched the guy. Okay, if you learn something here, then... Make sure that you're sticking by this book. 
Don't ever give up this book. Learn that from Denlinger, okay? Learn that from me. This is your standard, all right? But you get to a point where you say, hey, I, I just, uh, I don't watch him anymore or whatever else. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Go to somebody else and, and whatever, all right? I will offend you at some point in time. I will say the wrong thing and step on your toes. I will hurt your feelings at some point in time. It's not my intention, but I can't deal with people. If I'm dealing with you face to face, it's one thing, but I'm dealing with people online. I'm not sitting at the other end of the camera there and saying, okay, and sitting behind your screen and watching with you, you know, sitting right there beside you. I can't do that. I'm going to offend you at some point in time, but make sure that you don't leave the standard of truth. So, uh, if you're out there and you're some kind of narrow-minded bigot and whatever else, and you want to try to take this channel down or whatever else, go ahead. Like I've said many times, um, God won't give you permission to do it unless it's his time, number one. But number two, uh, you proved me right. If you can't handle the truth that I have spoken here, then go ahead. Do what you can to take me down. Uh, we're going to report you to local authorities. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've had many run-ins with the police over the years, and uh, we always come out and are friendly after the whole thing um, because they know I'm not a real threat to them. So, you know, whatever. Oh, well, we can send in this team or that team. Oh, go ahead. Do whatever you want. I don't care. I'm not going to stop preaching the Word of God. I'm going to stand by it. You see, I understand that there is a God and that He hasn't forsaken the earth. And that every single thing that I do, he knows about it. Every thought that I have, he knows it. Every secret thing will be brought into judgment. So, I got real cowardly years ago. And I looked at all that and I thought, I don't want to face God and have to give an account for the record of the bad things that I've done and thought and said and whatever else. I want out. <laughs> I'm not man enough to do that on my own. So I'll get a better man than me. His name's Jesus Christ. And I'll say, hey, could you take my place in front of, in this judgment thing coming up? You can? Oh, I get your righteousness and you get my wicked life? Okay, please. <laughs> Sign me up. And if you're wise, you'll do the same. That is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Please take heed to what I've said.